。镇宝在英国住久了，课余东奔西跑，找了些小事做着，在工厂实习，又可以拿津贴，用度宽裕了些。英也结识了几个女朋友，他是正经人。将正经女人与娼妓分得很清楚，可是他同时又是个盲人，谈恋爱的时间有限，因此自然而然的喜欢比较爽快的对象。爱丁堡的中国女人本就寥寥可数，内地来的两个女同学，她嫌过于矜持做作，教会派的又太教会派了。现在的教会毕竟是较尽人情了，很有些漂亮人物点缀其间。可是前十年的教会里，那些有爱心的信徒们往往是不怎么可爱的，活泼的还是几个华侨。若是杂种人，那比华侨更大方了。镇宝认识了一个叫玫瑰的姑娘，因为这初恋，所以他把以后的两个女人都比作玫瑰。这玫瑰的父亲是体面的英国商人，在南中国多年，因为一时的感情作用，娶了个广东女子为妻，带了她回国。现在那太太大约还在那里，可是似有如无，等闲不出来应酬。玫瑰进的是英国学校，就为了他是不完全的英国人，他比任何英国人还要英国化。英国的学生派是一种潇洒的漠然，对于最要紧的事尤为潇洒，尤为漠然。玫瑰是不是爱上了他？镇宝看不大出来，他自己是有点着迷了。两人都是喜欢快的人，礼拜六晚上一晚跑了几个舞场，不跳舞的时候坐着说话，他总像是心不在焉，用几根火柴棒设法顶起一只玻璃杯，要他帮忙支持着。玫瑰就是这样。顽皮的时候，脸上有一种端宁的表情。他家里养着一只芙蓉鸟，鸟一叫，他总算他是叫它，急忙答应一声“啊，鸟儿”，踮着脚，背着手，仰脸望着鸟笼。他那棕黄色的脸，因为是长圆形的，很像大人样，可是这时候显得很稚气。大眼睛望着笼中鸟，眼睁睁的，眼白发蓝，仿佛是望到极深的蓝天里去。也许她不过是个极平常的女孩子，不过因为年轻的缘故，有点什么地方使人不能懂得。也像那只鸟，叫这么一声，也不是叫那个人，也没叫出什么来。她的短裙子在膝盖上面就完了，露出一双轻巧的腿，精致的像橱窗里的木腿，皮色也像曝光油过的木头，头发剪得极短，脑后剃出一个小小的尖子。没有头发护着脖子，没有袖子护着手臂。他是个口没遮拦的人，谁都可以在他身上捞一把。他和镇宝随随便便，镇宝认为他是天真；他和谁都随便，镇宝就觉得他有点疯疯傻傻的。这样的女人在外国或是很普通，到中国来就行不通了。把她娶来，移植在家乡的社会里，那是劳神伤财，不上算的事。有天晚上，他开着车送她回家去。他常常这样送她回家，可是这次似乎有些不同，因为他就快离开英国了。如果他有什么话要说，早就该说了，可是他没有。他家住在城外很远的地方，深夜的汽车道上，微风白雾，轻轻拍在脸上，像个毛毛的粉扑子。车里的谈话也是轻飘飘的。标准英国式的，有一下没一下。玫瑰知道他已经失去他了，由于一种绝望的执拗，他从心里热出来。快到家的时候，他说：“就在这里停下吧，我不愿意让家里人看见我们说再会。”镇宝笑道：“当着他们的面，我一样的会吻你。”一面说，一面就伸过手臂去兜住他的肩膀。他把脸磕在他身上，车子一路开过去，开过他家门口几十码，方才停下了。镇宝把手伸到他的丝绒大衣底下去搂着他，隔着酸凉的水钻、银翠的绢花、许许多多玲珑累赘的东西，他的年轻的身子仿佛从衣服里蹦了出来。镇宝吻他，他眼泪流了一脸。是他哭了，还是他哭了？两人都不明白。车窗外还是那不着边际的清风湿雾，虚飘飘，叫人浑身气力没处用，只有用在拥抱上。
，玫瑰紧紧吊在他颈项上，老是觉得不对劲，换一个姿势又换一个姿势，不知道怎样贴得更紧一点才好，恨不得生在他身上，嵌在他身上。振宝心里也乱了主意，他做梦也没想到玫瑰爱他到这程度，他要怎样就怎样。可是这是绝对不行的，玫瑰到底是个正经人，这种事不是他做的。玫瑰的身子从衣服里蹦出来，蹦到他身上，但是他是他自己的主人，他的自制力，他过后也觉得惊讶，他竟硬着心肠把玫瑰送回家去了。临别的时候，他捧着他的湿如的脸，捧着呼呼的鼻息，眼泪水与闪动的睫毛，睫毛在他手掌心里扑动的像个小飞虫。以后他常常拿这件事来激励自己，在那种情形下都管得住自己，现在就管不住了吗？他对他自己那晚上的操行充满了惊奇赞叹，但是他心里是懊悔。背着他自己，他未尝不懊悔。这件事他不大告诉人，但是朋友中没有一个不知道他是个坐怀不乱的柳下惠。他这名声是出去了，因为成绩优越，毕业之前他已经接了英商红一染织厂的聘书，一回上海便去就职。他家住在江湾，离事务所太远了。起初，他借住在熟人家里。后来，他弟弟同都宝读完了初中，郑宝设法把他带出来，给他补书，要考红衣染织厂附属的专门学校。两人一同耽搁在朋友家，似有不便。恰巧郑宝有个老同学，名唤王世宏的，早两年回国，住在福开森路一家公寓里，有一间多余的房子。郑宝和他商量着，连家具一同租了下来。搬进去这天，郑宝下了班，已经黄昏时候。忙忙碌碌和弟弟压着苦力们，将香笼抬了进去。王世宏立在门首，叉腰看着。内室走出一个女人来，正在洗头发，堆着一头的肥皂沫子，高高砌出云石塑像似的雪白的波泉。她双手托住了头发，向世宏说道。趁挑夫在这里，叫他们把东西一样样布置好了吧。要我们大司务帮忙，可是千难万难，全得趁他高兴。王世宏道：“我替你们介绍，这是镇宝，这是独宝，这是我的太太，还没见过面吧？”这女人把右手从头发里抽出来，待要与客人握手，看看手上有肥皂，不便伸过来，单指笑着点了个头，把手指在浴衣上开了一开。溅了点肥皂沫子到镇宝手背上，他不肯擦掉它，由他自己干了。那一块皮肤上便有一种紧缩的感觉，像有张嘴轻轻吸着它似的。镇宝 lived in England for a considerable time. His factory internship paid a stipend, and he rustled up odd jobs on the side. Once he'd made himself a bit more comfortable financially speaking, he acquired a few girlfriends. He was a nice fellow, and he wanted to meet a nice girl, not some prostitute. But he was also a busy man who couldn't spend lots of time on courting. Naturally, he liked girls who were a little more forthright. There were only a few Chinese girls in Edinburgh. Two of them classmates who hailed from the inland provinces. He found them too affected, too churchy, altogether too pious. Nowadays, the churches have become something of a social scene, with quite a few beauties on display. But ten years ago, the fervent churchgoers who had love in their hearts weren't, in fact, lovely. The lively ones were the overseas Chinese. Mixed blood girls went even farther. Chen Bao met a girl named Rose. She was his first love, which is why he also likened his two later women to roses. Rose's father was a good-looking English businessman who'd lived in southern China for many years, and then, thanks to a passing fancy, married a Cantonese girl and brought her home to Edinburgh. The wife had to be living in the house still, but she was practically invisible and never took part in social events. Rose attended an English school, and because she wasn't completely English, she acted more English than the English themselves. The English students liked to affect a certain dashing indifference, and when something really important was at stake, the affection grew even stronger. Chen Bao couldn't figure out whether or not Rose really loved him. He, for his part, was rather dazzled. 
They both liked to do things fast, and on Saturday nights, they made the rounds of different dance halls. When they weren't out on the dance floor, but just sitting around and talking, Rose never seemed to pay much attention. She'd take out some matches and try to balance a glass on top of them. Chimba was supposed to help. That was Rose, solemn as could be when she was horsing around. There was a canary at her place, and whenever it sang, she thought it was calling to her. Yes, bird, she'd answer right off, standing on tiptoe with her hands behind her back and her face tilted up toward the birdcage. Her tan face was long, not round like a child's, but at such moments, she seemed remarkably childlike. She'd gaze wide-eyed at the bird in the cage, the whites of her eyes tinged blue, as if she were staring into the deep blue skies. Rose may have been the most ordinary of girls, but her very youth made her remarkably hard to read, like that canary, calling out but not really saying anything to anyone. Her short skirt ended above her knees, and her legs were light and nimble, as delicately made as wooden legs in a shop window. Her skin was as smooth and glistening as freshly planed and oiled wood. Her hair was cut very short, shaved down to a little point at the nape of her neck. No hair to protect her neck, no sleeves to protect her arms. Rose did not watch her words, and her body was open for the taking. She was carefree with Zhen Bao, and he put that down to her being innocent. But her being so carefree with everyone struck him as slightly nutty. This kind of woman was common enough in foreign countries, but in China, it would never do. Marrying her, then transplanting her to his hometown, that would be a big waste of time and money, not a good deal at all. One evening, he drove her home, as he often did. But this time, it seemed different, because he was going to leave England soon, and if he had anything to say, he should have said it by now. He hadn't. Her house was quite far from town. The faint black and white of the late night road patted their faces like a powder puff. The conversation in the car was desultory in the English fashion, starting and stopping again. Rose knew that she had already lost him. Then, out of a kind of hopeless obstinacy, her heart caught fire. Stop here, she said, when they had almost reached her house. I don't want to let my family see us saying goodbye. I'd kiss you even in front of them. Chen Bao said, smiling. He reached out to wrap his arm around her shoulder, and she buried her face into his chest. The car kept going. They were well past her house before it stopped. Chen Bao slid his hand under her velvet coat and pulled her toward him. Behind her aching cold diamonds, crinkly silver lace, hundreds of exquisite nuisances, her young body seemed to leap out of her clothes. Chen Bao kissed her, and tears streamed over her face till neither of them could tell who was crying. Outside the car, a damp, limitless fog floated in the wind. Its emptiness sapped their strength, and all they could do was hang on to each other. Rose clung to his neck, this way, then that, trying to pull ever closer, wishing she could fuse her body with his, press herself into it. Chen Bao was so confused that he couldn't think. He had never dreamed that Rose loved him so much. He could have done whatever he wanted, but this would not do. Rose, after all, was a decent girl. This sort of thing was not for him. Rose's body leapt out of her clothes, leapt onto his body, but he was his own master. Afterward, even he was surprised by his self-control. He'd hardened his heart and taken Rose home. Just before he left. He held her moist face with its sniffles and tears and quivering eyelashes that fluttered in his palms like some tiny winged creature. In later days, he'd recall this experience whenever he needed to rally his strength. If you could control yourself then, in that situation, surely you can do so now. His behavior that evening filled him with astonishment and admiration, and yet in his heart he felt regret. Without admitting it, he felt quite a lot of regret. He seldom mentioned the incident, but there was not one of his friends who was unaware of Chen Bao's reputation as a regular Liu Xiahui, a man who could keep perfectly calm with a beautiful woman in his lap. Word had gotten around. Chen Bao's grades were excellent, and before he'd even graduated, he was offered a position at Great Beneficence, an English dyeing and weaving company. He started there immediately upon his return to Shanghai. 
Zhen Bao's family home was in Jiangwan, quite far from his job. And at first, he stayed with some old family friends. But when his younger brother Tong Du Bao finished his secondary schooling, Chen Bao made arrangements for Du Bao to come and live with him, so he could help him with his studies. He wanted Du Bao to take the entrance exam for the technical school that was affiliated with the Great Beneficence Dyeing and Weaving Company. They couldn't both stay in the friend's home; that would be too great an imposition. As it happened. An old classmate of Zhen Bao's, Wang Shihong, had an empty room in his place. Wang Shihong had been abroad and had come back to Shanghai two years before Zhen Bao. Now he was living in an apartment on Ferguson Road. He and Zhen Bao struck a deal. The room was even furnished. On the day he was to move in, Zhen Bao left work just after dusk. He and his brother were busy supervising the coolies as they carried the trunks in, and Wang Shihong was standing arms akimbo in the doorway. When a woman walked in from the room behind, she was washing her hair, which was all lathered up with shampoo. The white curls standing high on her head like a marble sculpture. While the workmen are here, she said to Shi Hong, holding her hair with her hands, "Have them arrange all the furniture and things. It's no use asking our major domo to help. He'll just make excuses. If he's not in the mood, he won't do anything." Let me introduce everyone," said Wang Shi Hong. Zhen Bao, Du Bao, my wife. I believe you haven't met yet. The woman withdrew her hand from her hair to shake hands with the guests, but seeing the shampoo on her fingers, she hesitated. She nodded and smiled instead, then wiped her fingers on her dressing gown. A little shampoo splashed the back of Zhen Bao's hand. Instead of rubbing it off, he let it dry there. The skin puckered up slightly, as if a mouth were lightly sucking at the spot. Thank <laughs> you.